Well, good evening, and welcome to another presentation from the How We Diet. We're excited that you're joining us this evening, and um, we're excited that Connie and Melody are with us and going to present a great information. It's a timely one with the holidays right before us. Getting those recipes out there is, is really important so that we um, are able to maintain our diet and maintain our health even through the holiday season. What's really neat about uh, holidays and recipes is um, you can really make healthy foods and it doesn't have to be bland. It can taste great and it can still be festive. And so Connie and Melody are going to present uh, some great information this evening and I know you'll be blessed by it. Before we introduce them though and get started, I'd like to go ahead and um, open us up with a word of prayer. Um, dear Lord, we just uh, thank you for this day and for this opportunity to share this information, Lord. We pray that you'll um, um, pro provide everything to run smoothly and that the information that we, we give will be heard and understood and that through this that some people will be able to have a healthier Thanksgiving and Christmas than they would otherwise. It's a great time of year, especially as we start looking forward and toward the birth of our Lord and Savior, Lord, and we just... Um, so grateful to be able to present this at this time of year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, this is a new software computer system for us. The other company that we were using went out of business, and so this is a new experience. So we, we have a little bit of a learning curve here, and um, we hope that you'll bear with us. If, if you're used to doing um, webinars with us, if, if there's any issues, please do send us a comment. Um, there's a couple different ways to submit questions and so forth, but we'll be working through um, the questions either during the presentation or um, at the end. And so we're just real excited um, to be able to, to use this. And it's actually some, some neat features in here that we are just learning. So we're, um, we're doing good with the learning curve, and we hope that everything goes smoothly as, as we're learning it. As we uh, look forward to the presentation tonight, we have two great speakers with us. Um, Connie Gesser has been a customer service representative with Howie Diet for 12 years. And Connie actually moved down to, to Shelby and to our headquarters to work with Howie Diet. And um, she's been just a great um, partner as, as we've um, gone through these 12 years. She loves the diet. She loves helping people. And she's given many classes at the Howie Diet, and she and Melody have co-taught co classes, so they make a good team. Melody is Amen. part of our marketing. Yeah, Melody is um, is part of our marketing and customer service team, and has created Howie Diet friendly recipes for 14 years. Now, Melody started out in our health minister department, and she's worked all through the the different areas and in the store and in customer service, and so she's really um, been been great at, at helping customers, but also help present this information. She has an art degree from UNC Chapel Hill, and her creativity is evident in her recipes, and you'll see that tonight. So Connie and Melody would like to share with you their top favorite Howie Diet recipes. So Connie and Melody, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Paul. One of my biggest passions in life is preparing healthy recipes. All of the recipes I'm discussing today are gluten-free. They also follow the food guidelines of the Hallelujah Diet. No meat, dairy, white flour, white sugar, refined salt, caffeine, or bad fats. Connie uh, brings me samples of her latest and greatest recipe experience, and she has shown me many recipes that I never would have tried. But she brings them, and she brags about them, and she suggests them. It's really been helpful to me over the years. That's what we are hoping to do today, to present some recipes to you that you may have never tried. We don't want you to eat poor quality food during the holidays or any time when there are so many delectable, healthy choices. I will say we all have various likes and dislikes. Melody and I even gravitate toward different flavors. So some of these recipes we share may suit you, others may not. But our hope is that you will find a few ideas or recipes that you will love. We have all of the recipes we are sharing tonight on a PDF because you certainly do not have time to write each recipe down. All you have to do is to call us 
We are open between 8 and 6 Eastern Time, and that's Monday through Friday. And then also you can email us at customer serve or cust serve, I'm sorry, at myhdiet.com, and we will email you the recipes. We do have a very beautiful paper version. If you would like to order that, say you're going to place an order and you would like a paper version, we do have that, and it's $4.95. We do have time. Uh, we do not have time, even tonight, I will say, to read out every single ingredient. It would just take too long, but we will have the ingredients alongside the picture of each recipe. So don't worry about it. Just call our customer service department, and we'll be happy to email you, or you can email us. Connie, why don't you tell us about the first one? Let's begin with tabbouleh from Hallelujah Diet website. This is one of my favorite salads. It's important to have a variety of go-to recipes that taste very different when you want to eat a lot of salads. For example, if you have decided to eat a large amount of raw vegetables, but make the same tossed salad every day, you won't stay committed to your raw food diet for very long. We all love diversity when it comes to our meals. Black olives, garlic, parsley, mint, olive oil, and lemon juice are some of the ingredients that give this salad a unique flavorful taste. Traditionally, tabbouleh is made with bulgur wheat or grain and called a Middle Eastern dish. In this recipe, we put the cauliflower in the food processor and pulse it until it resembles the texture and size of grain. Tiny pieces of cauliflower take the place of grain in this recipe. It is perfect for people who want to avoid gluten and eat a lot of raw vegetables. When I first discovered this recipe, I made it over and over because I think it tastes so good. Recently, I made it for a friend and told her if she liked it, it would be her birthday present. Fortunately, she liked it, so I gave it to her and called it her birthday salad. This recipe tastes best the first and second day after you make it. Tabbouleh is a Middle Eastern dish and goes well with falafels made with chickpeas. This cooked recipe by Kim Wilson of Falafel Patties would make a terrific meal when combined with raw tabbouleh. Process the ingredients in a food processor and either bake them or saute them in a skillet. Wow, those look great. Well, the tabbouleh that you showed us earlier, Connie, it reminds me of my favorite way to eat a salad, actually, the way you finely chop the cauliflower. I call that micro-chopped, and that's when you place all your salad materials in a food processor and chop them to about the size of a piece of rice. Well, it stays crunchy, and the flavors get beautifully mingled together. And of all the many, many, many micro-chopped salads I have eaten, this basil micro-chopped salad is as good as it gets. And one of the reasons is the fresh basil. We have discovered that mint and basil take a recipe to a whole new level. So for anyone with gut issues, which that's a lot of people we've discovered. Chopping your salad into tiny pieces ensures that you don't swallow big old lumps of raw vegetables. I am the worst at wolfing down my food. So micro chopping does the majority of the chewing for me. I still have to chew some, but I don't have to chew as much. And what is very delicious is adding a tangerine in with your micro chopped salad. It gives it a wonderful citrus flavor. And of course, you can add lemon, you can add lime, and you can add nuts in there with it. Adding nuts and seeds makes the salad richer and it provides staying power. You can even add some while you are chopping it, or you can take your chopped salad ingredients and then you can add whole nuts or seeds in with it and just stir it up. Either way, it is very delicious. So, if, though, I wanted to eat a salad without chopping it, 
what I could do is I can make a scrumptious dressing. Dressing can make all the difference in a salad. And raspberries are so delicious. I love them. Berries are something I try to get in my diet every day, whether it be raspberries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, or all of them. <laughs> They're good all mixed together. And they provide a wide array of phytonutrients that discourage inflammation within the body. And I do purchase large bags of organic frozen berries. And I do it right here locally in my very small town. I have a chain here. It starts with a W and it ends with marked. And boy, they carry organic berries and they carry organic cherries. I'm so happy that so many, res uh, not restaurants, so many grocery stores, even the small ones, I mean, they are carrying these organic frozen berries and at very good prices. And of course, with this particular dressing, we know that mint takes recipes up a notch. So I can even blend in mint with my raspberries. So here's another delicious raw way to eat. And boy, isn't that pretty. Another way to enjoy raw cuisine this holiday season and beyond is with raw soups. And I can barely come up for air when I eat this crunchy raw carrot radish soup. Very simply, you blend veggies for the soupy portion, and you can pour that in a bowl. And then for the crunchy portion, you cut up radishes and carrots. It's very thin, just as thin as you can into little bitty slivers. And then you combine that with the crunchy the crunchy with the soupy portion. And the texture is irresistible. And Connie, this is one thing that you have taught me is how delicious radishes are. You know, I never used to eat radishes and I thought they were burny and biting. But over the years, I've, I've started eating them and I've watched Connie use them. And so, and so I really love using them. And they're so beautiful, that white center and the red on the outside. And when we were preparing for this webinar, I thought back over all the culinary demonstrations that I have been to over the years, and it's been a lot. And I have realized something, and this is very true. My palate has changed drastically since I heard Reverend Mountain speak back in 2005. Wow. And I believe that my palate has changed for the better. I think it's good that now I like things like radishes and turnips, and I love them. I don't just like them. And, and furthermore, the thought in the beginning of just blending up a bunch of vegetables and pouring them in a bowl, that re absolutely repulsed me. I thought, who could do that? But I love them now, and I appreciate them. And I do believe that we can, over the years, we can get a, a palate that really appreciates the things that bring health to our bodies, even radishes and turnips. What a great way to get cruciferous vegetables into our life. Okay, so we've got a soup. I'm going to call this recipe stew. It reminds me of a stew, and I think it's beautiful. And once again, we blend up veggies to make the juicy portion, and we chop up cabbage and other items for the crunchy portion. The raw soups and the raw stews can be eaten in the place of a salad. You do not have to eat a big fat salad at every meal. You can really change it up. So Connie, what do you have next? Sesame kelp noodles. I made this recipe one morning. I packed half of it in my lunch for work and I ate half of it that night for supper. It was so delicious. I did not have Napa cabbage, so I made it with headed or leafy green cabbage that I had just purchased from the farmer's market. The Napa cabbage leaves have a wrinkled appearance. It has a milder flavor than regular green cabbage, but the two can be used interchangeably in recipes. This recipe calls for tamari, which is a wheat-free soy sauce. I prefer to use coconut aminos. Coconut aminos is a sauce made from sap, coconut blossom nectar, from coconut palms. The sap is fermented and then blended with sea salt. 
The ingredients, toasted sesame oil, garlic, and ginger, give this dish an Asian flavor. It's a nice change from a tossed salad. Kelp is a brown algae that grows in ocean water. Kelp noodles are a good source of minerals such as iodine, iron, and calcium. Kelp noodles are semi-transparent noodles made from the jelly-like extract left after steaming edible kelp. They are made without the addition of grain, flour, or starch. Kelp noodles have a chewy texture and are low in calories. I found kelp noodles at the health food store. This recipe can be made without the noodles if you can't find kelp noodles. This dish is sweet, flavorful, and spicy. I make it frequently. The Hallelujah Diet encourages us to eat 85% raw food. It's easy to fall into preparing things like vegan pizza and sandwiches. However, we need to be eating mostly salads. This recipe helps us eat more raw vegetables. This recipe I'd like to talk about next. I call it living lasagna or a stacked salad. It is one of the most scrumptious recipes I've ever put in my mouth. However, it does use a lot of kitchen equipment and it can be labor intensive. However, I cannot stress to you enough it is well worth it. There are countless gourmet vegan recipes and delicious ones. And many of them take hours to create. And I just don't have hours to create all my food. But this one, <laughs> it is worth the time that it takes. The white portion that you see that's supposed to resemble lasagna noodles is thinly sliced turnip. What you do is you just place spinach greens at the bottom, then turnips, then your nut cheese, then arugula, and then you just start all over with your layering. It can be topped with either a rich sauce made with sun-dried tomatoes or just a simple dressing made with fresh tomatoes. I like the fresh tomato dressing the best. I'd like to show you now a picture of a mandolin. It perfectly slices a root vegetable extremely thin. If you're good with a knife, you could do a fine job without the mandolin. As you may notice, as Connie and I go along, having a good kitchen equipment is a big plus when making fun recipes. I am currently on my third food processor, but I have gotten a lot of use out of all of them. Okay, so here's the red pepper cheese sauce. We're going to be using cashews and macadamia nuts beautiful combination. And yes, macadamias are a little more expensive. They are worth it, especially if you want a really good treat. And of course, here's your tomato dressing. If you want to drizzle that over the top, it's just tomatoes, bell pepper, lemon juice, and olive oil. Very simple. You can make that in a little mini blender if you have one. And then here's your raw tomato sauce. It does use your sun-dried tomatoes. All of those all of those, everything is wonderful. You could just make the cheese portion if you wanted to and put it on top of some uh, sliced veggies. You could put just the cheese on top of a salad. Well worth it. Very, very, very delicious. Rhonda's guacamole. Yeah. Okay, Rhonda's guacamole. There are three simple steps. Step one. Place the first five ingredients in the food processor with the S blade and process until creamy. Step two, place into a bowl. Step three, fold in chopped tomatoes, onions, red pepper, and cilantro. If you make a slight change to those instructions, you can make the presentation look completely different. Instead of folding all the chopped tomatoes, onions, red peppers, and cilantro, Save some and put it on top of the guacamole. If you do this, it looks more like salsa than dip. I blend the first five ingredients in my KitchenAid food processor. I'm very pleased with my machine because it's heavy duty and can handle blending, chopping, shredding vegetables, nuts, seeds, and fruit. I like to serve this recipe on a round serving tray 
with the dip in the center of the plate and little piles of colorful vegetables around it. Raw vegetables are very filling with all the fiber. So this recipe is perfect if you want to be healthy and or lose weight. If you are filled up with the raw vegetables, you are less tempted to eat unhealthy food that's all around us this time of year. I also serve guacamole with organic, non-genetically modified corn chips made with sea salt. I don't buy chips very often, so they were a real treat for me. This recipe is great for breakfast. Yes, I have eaten it for breakfast on occasion, lunch or supper. It makes a good meal or a delicious dish to take to a party, potluck, or any social gathering. Roma tomatoes are called for in this recipe because they contain less liquid than other tomatoes. However, I make the recipe with regular tomatoes and the texture is just fine. Guacamole is best eaten the same day when the color is still light green. After a day or two, it turns darker and it's a little less appealing. So serve it the same day you make it. It makes a pretty holiday dish with all the colors. Better than salmon loaf. Nut loaves, pâtés, and spreads are filling and delicious. My favorite of all the nut loaves I have ever tried is another Rhonda recipe. Instead of using a juicer, I process the soaked drained almonds in a food processor with the carrots and onions until it forms a pasty, pasty texture. I like to use a food processor because it's easier to clean than a juicer. Then I stir in the rest of the ingredients and shape it into a loaf. Sometimes I shape it to look like a fish. I use pieces of celery and red pepper to form an eye and mouth, as though we were looking at one side of the fish. When I made this recently, I enjoyed it for breakfast, spread on two open-faced pieces of toasted Ezekiel bread. It was delicious and filling. I love the texture of the crunchy bread. I wasn't hungry the rest of the morning. This nut loaf is a is good the same day or even two or three days later, unlike some raw food recipes. One winter, I drove from North Carolina to Virginia to meet some relatives at a resort. During the week we spent together, there was a beautiful snowfall. I hibernated indoors and prepared a special lunch to celebrate my dad's birthday. We lit a candle on the table and turned on the electric fireplace. We sat down to eat Hallelujah Diet recipes that I had prepared with the white snow falling outside. Two of the dishes included in the lunch were the carob hazelnut chia pudding, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and this better than salmon loaf. Since my dad was struggling with some health issues, I felt good about ministering to him by making the nutritious food. I believe healthy food plays a big part in contributing to good health in the body. Those two recipes, along with other Hallelujah Diet dishes that we prepared that week, are part of the positive memories that we have of our time together. That's a great story. Thanks. Nut loaves can also be served inside a bell pepper or tomato. They can be placed on top of veggies such as sliced turnip and sweet potato slices. You know, sometimes with recipes like this one, with the nut pâtés, you may have to teach your friends what they are because they may have never seen anything like this before. But if they taste it, they'll love it. So let's talk about juicing. Connie and I both must be very, very selective with our time in the kitchen. We get to work by 8.30 in the morning. We get home about 6 o'clock at night. We have many pressing responsibilities in our lives. So we take our kitchen time very seriously, and we don't have any time to waste. Now, talking about time, one of the foundations of the Hallie Diet is juicing. It's a challenge, but juicing is well worth the time. And here is a winning juice. If you go to true studies on beets, like if you go to PubMed and read all the properties of beets, you will be inspired to add them to your 
life, and they are fabulous in juice. I love juice. I, I love fresh juice. It's just something that there's nothing like in the whole wide world. I'd like to tell you a funny story. <laughs> I had some of my family members coming up fairly recently, and I decided that I wanted to impress them, and I wanted to just make some wonderful fresh juice for them. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to get out my juicer, and I'm going to make this juice, and they're going to love it, and they're going to brag on me, and I'm going to feel so, so you know, special and all that. Well, you know how it can go sometimes. Uh, I also wanted to practice some piano pieces so that I could play some piano for them. And, of course, I wanted my house to look nice, so I was cleaning my house. Well, I didn't have time to juice. I was so disappointed, and I thought, oh, my goodness. So here they were with no juice. So what was I going to do? I made them barley max. <laughs> and I want you to know they loved it. They were saying, oh, yeah, I need to get some of this. <laughs> so you know what? If you don't have time to juice for people, fix them some barley max. It comes in original, and it comes in berry flavor, and you can even mix the original and the berry together. It's time to talk about dessert. Carob hazelnut chia pudding by Chef Richard. The first step is to make the nut milk. I use almonds instead of hazelnuts in this recipe. Then pour the almond milk back into the Vitamix along with dates, maple syrup, vanilla, cinnamon, and sea salt. Be sure to purchase medjool dates. If you substitute a different kind of date, it does not taste as good. You can make some of the pudding white and some of it chocolate colored. Pour half of the pudding mixture into the bowl before adding carob for the white pudding. Add carob to the remaining portion for the chocolate looking pudding. Carob tastes similar to chocolate without the caffeine. Refrigerate the pudding for three hours, stirring occasionally. Pour it into six small serving bowls or custard cups. Garnish with raspberries and or cherries. I especially like the cherries with the stems on them. I like to eat this pudding cold right from the refrigerator. It's just the right amount of sweetness. Chia seeds are loaded with antioxidants, high-quality protein, and omega-3 fatty acids. Gluten-Free Bread by Kim Wilson Bread is a real treat for me. One Sunday morning, I planned to make this bread before leaving for church. I discovered I had all the ingredients except baking powder. So I went online to look for a substitute and learned I could use cream of tartar instead of baking powder. I had cream of tartar. This recipe says two to four tablespoons of honey or molasses. I used four tablespoons of blackstrap molasses in the bread. Adding raisins and walnuts gave the bread a nice texture and sweetness. Between four ripe bananas, four tablespoons of molasses, and a half a cup of raisins, the bread was very sweet to me. The next time I make it, I'll probably use two tablespoons of molasses instead of four so it's less sweet. This bread is delicious, dense, and would complement any holiday table. Gluten-free bread is available at most grocery stores. However, have you ever looked at the ingredients on the label? Often, it's a long list of unhealthy items, including hydrogenated fats. So just because a bread is gluten-free, it doesn't mean it's good for you. That's why this bread is so great. You are in control of what goes into the bread. And I totally agree with what you said earlier about make sure you get medjool dates. Medjool dates have just this caramel-like flavor. They are so delicious. I keep them fresh ones in my cupboard all the time. I never run out of medjool dates. And one of my number one foods and go-to foods of all time are the nut and date balls. This recipe with the strawberry may be my number one recipe ever. I eat nut date balls every day. 
They are a true go-to food. Because these balls are made with strawberries, which contain juice, they must be kept in the freezer. The juice from the berries makes them not quite as stiff enough, so they do need to be frozen. But they're great right out of the freezer. I mean, you take ice cream right out of the freezer and eat it, right? I mean, good ice cream. So why can't you use strawberry nut freezer balls right out of the freezer? You'll need to blend the ingredients, and then you transfer the dough onto a plate and place it in the freezer for a couple of hours before you're able to roll the balls. Of course, you don't have to roll this into balls. You can just take a plate or a tray, and then you can just scoop out some and, and plop it down on the plate and freeze it that way. They are fabulous. They really are. And nuts are truly how I stay sustained. They have protein in them. They have fat in them. And most people know that nuts contain quite a bit of fat, and they may feel reluctant to eat them. I do hope that you watch Michael Donaldson's webinars on nuts and seeds. I truly learn so much, and I'm so glad he gives us this detailed research that he does. And you'll find out that if you want to stay mostly raw, 85 75 to 80 percent raw nuts and seeds are probably going to be necessary in your diet so pretend like you were trying to get 2,000 calories a day and I took this information straight from Michael's webinar so 15 percent fruit would be about 300 calories 15 percent of cooked food that's 300 calories Two glasses of fresh juice, that's going to be about 140 calories. A pound of raw vegetables that you eat, that's going to be about 130 calories. And, of course, you're going to put some oil on there, maybe flax or olive oil. That's 260 calories. So right there, you have about 1,130 calories. So if you're trying to get to 2,000 calories a day, where are you going to get that extra 870 calories? Where is that going to come from? Perhaps you might use a little more olive oil or, you know, on your salad or flax oil. Uh, you might put a little bit more fruit and push it up another 100 calories. I don't know if you want to eat a whole lot more raw vegetables. I mean, you don't want to sit down and eat a head of cabbage or something. I mean, that's just going to be too abusive on the stomach. So where are you going to get that 870 calories? Well, According to Michael, and it makes so much sense, by adding nuts and seeds and avocados, you can stay in that 85% raw range. So, as Connie was saying when she showed you that avocado, I'm sorry, that guacamole recipe full of avocados, she said she eats that for breakfast sometimes. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. Did you know also that the consumption of nuts leads to a 19 to 20% decrease in all calls mortality. Now, obviously, we can't sit down and just eat nuts by the bag full, but we can eat them consciously. And these strawberry nut balls, they were only about 100 calories each, so I could just sit down and eat two or three of those. And one more thing, when you make these nut balls, make two batches at a time. I think that's a smart move because... You're already going to have to clean up your food processing bowl, so you might as well make two batches and put those in the freezer. And we do know that variety is the spice of life. And so these balls are just called sweet sunburst balls, and they resemble raw carrot cake, but not as sweet. As we mentioned earlier, the palate can change over the years, and we don't want things that taste like sweet cake and candy anymore. Using just two and a half dates alongside the delicious sweet carrots, boy, that's plenty sweet. And these balls are about 150 calories each, and they're very different from the strawberry balls. So in closing, what I'd like to say is this. These recipes that we've shared, they're meant for people like us like me and Connie and hopefully you too, people that like raw cuisine and know the value in the living enzymes. So if somebody comes over to your house and, and they're really like a heavy meat eater perhaps, then that is what they like. 
that is what they like. So don't expect them to get real excited, perhaps over a raw soup or a, a raw cabbage stew or something like that. But perhaps they will like that, even if it's just for a side item for them. Hopefully they can appreciate it because it sure is good. But their taste buds are different than ours. So may we all enjoy delicious, healthy foods for the holidays and beyond. And I hope we have inspired you to try something new. Are there any questions? Well, Melody and Connie, great information. And um, there were several recipes there that got my mouth to water it. So, um, Isn't that the truth? I, I'm, oh, yes, for, for sure. And I love that you have dates as your um, go-to all the time, because that's one of my favorites. I think uh, you probably remember that. But so we do have a question there on, on the tabbouleh. Um, heads of cauliflower only, or, or do you include the stems? I just use the heads. Just the heads. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's yes, that's right. Well, that was really a good idea. That was really a good idea, too. You know, and cauliflowers become so many different um, replacements for for things with grain in them, um, your cauliflower pizza crusts and and cauliflower rice and all sorts of things like that. So it's pretty neat that you put that into the tabbouleh. Absolutely. Yes, it, it turns out really good. It makes a good salad. That's good. Well, um, it looks like that was the only question. I know you're going to send out um, the the recipes to people who call in or, or email in. Um, before we wrap it up for the night, is there anything else you'd like to share? And and could you I repeat just want, the email? I would, I would like to. And repeat the yeah, email that you. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. CUST. It's CUST serve at myhdiet.com. Just. C U S T S E R V. <laughs> C U S T S E R V at myhdiet.com. So that's how you can reach us anytime. And then of course if you place great. an order and you want and you want a paper copy, um well, they're four ninety five. They're and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. But I the the one thing that I would love to say, and I appreciate you saying this is really what is on my heart is that we really have to be very diligent to stay away from foods that insult the body. Yeah, there's so much out there that is so bad that we, we really have to be diligent. And these foods are so delicious that I just hope that everybody stands firm through the entire holiday season and they walk out of it feeling, fa feeling fantastic and knowing that they have done the very best they can for their body because your body will respond when you give it what it is designed to have. Uh, that's very well said for sure. And, you know, the holidays are the time of year sometimes when we get knocked off track. And so it's so important to, to be conscious that, you know, um, there are good foods that we can eat and we need to make Make sure that we're continuing to eat healthy even through the holidays. Did you have anything else, Connie? Well, I see a question there. Someone is asking about substituting aguave, and I just substitute mostly honey, sometimes a little stevia, sometimes a little maple syrup, but probably honey is my go-to if I want to substitute a sweetener that I prefer not to use. Got right. dates. <laughs> dates. <laughs> Melody and Paul like their dates. I love my dates. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Well, Connie and Melody, thanks so much for uh, putting the presentation together and for sharing this evening. And um, we uh, we certainly appreciate the information that you've given us. And I can't wait for uh, um, try some of these recipes out myself. And I'm curious to hear how the re how the customers and participants here think about the recipes too and there's a lot of recipes on our website um, myhdiet.com and so feel free you know this this is a sampling but there's there's tons of recipes up there and, and so many different ideas um, Rhonda has a holiday recipe book and and some of these were pulled from that so 
be sure to check out our resources that, that we have for you there. But uh, we appreciate you joining us this evening and um, look forward to talking to you next month. And until then, we pray that you have a great Thanksgiving. It's a wonderful time of year to be able to uh, um, get spend some time with family and friends and, and reconnect with people. So we, um, and it's also a good time of year to be thankful for the things that we have. And we're, we're such a blessed country and we have so many different things. We were just talking with some missionaries uh, over the weekend and they're in um, Kenya and, you know, they're, they're begging for water, for, for fresh water in some of the areas there. And, and it's just, we have so many resources that we just take for granted. So we have so many things to be thankful for. So we just um, hope that you you have a great Thanksgiving season and we'll talk to you next month. Thank you and God bless.